Logitech MX keys, Sachi, and the Apple Magic Keyboard. Three very different keyboards, but built with a very similar look and feel, but each with their own take on what makes a great keyboard. We're going through every single one of them, comparing them on design, functionality, and compatibility with all of your devices. Let's get into it. Okay, so chances are, if you're watching this video, you've had the Apple Magic Keyboard, been there, done that, want a bit of a change. So Logitech MX Keys is right away the first choice for most people when they're looking to switch. And rightfully so, there's a lot of great features built in here. So immediately you're gonna notice it's a lot bulkier. It's heavier, it stands much higher than the trackpad right beside it. The keys also have a lot more motion range, meaning you need to get used to pushing a lot harder than you were before. And now you really wanna keep in mind what you're using beside this keyboard. I'm working with an Apple trackpad and you can see right beside it here, it's a much lower profile and it actually has been a really weird shift to go from the keyboard back to the trackpad, given that they're not at the same height. Now I know obviously that's kind of nitpicking here, but that is what we're here to do in this video to decide which is the perfect keyboard for you. Now obviously if you swap that out for a Logitech MX mouse, totally different story. They're gonna be at a similar height, it's not gonna bother you. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit later why you might actually wanna make that switch to the mouse if you're using this keyboard. So right away when you're using this keyboard, you'll see a feature which I can only describe as delightful. Not a word I use often, but you'll see why. Any motion around the keyboard is gonna cause it to kind of come alive. It's gonna light up. Also wakes your Mac, which I found really cool. So rather than kind of mashing on the keyboard like you do every other time, you won't need to do that with this. In terms of connections, it is really easy to pair. You can see there's the three inputs on the keyboard right here. And by simply pressing them, it's gonna switch. And as you can see here, it really does just take seconds. Once I switch between devices, I hit the button and there you go. It's working within a couple of seconds. You can set all of those into pairing mode if you want to have a new device by pressing and holding. All works really smoothly. So jumping back to the design of this keyboard, you can see that a lot of the buttons are raised when it comes down to that bottom row of the control command space bar, as well as the function keys at the very top, but then everything below or in the middle all kind of bevel in, but it is a really cool way to know exactly where you're typing without needing to look at the keyboard. Now looking at the top of these function keys here, so you can see that we've got our brightness toggles, we've got mission control, launch pad, toggle for the brightness of the keyboard itself, all of your media controls, and then your mute and volume up and down, as well as your eject, which you're probably not gonna need if you're using a modern computer. In fact, it actually doesn't do anything for this M1 iMac, but that does mean it's something that you can remap to pretty much whatever you want. And by the way, to remap a button on here, pretty much anything on that top row you can reconfigure. And you can do that by downloading the Logitech Options app where you have a bunch of different features to customize this thing. Continuing across the top row, you can see that we've got our input buttons. And then continuing across that, we have our calculator button that is functional directly on Mac. We've also got screenshot, which does the entire screen. And we've got our lock button to lock the computer. And again, as you can see while I'm touching this keyboard, it is a really cool experience that it has that smart illumination. It's lighting up as my hand approaches the keyboard. Also, as you walk away from the keyboard, it will dim again. Now the ability to light up and wake your computer seems like something that Apple should have thought of and something that should have been on the Magic Keyboard and Trackpad lineup. So props to Logitech for actually incorporating this before Apple. And the last thing on that backlight is that it is dynamic. So based on the ambient lighting in your room or as it gets darker throughout the day, that is gonna dim. And then it'll get brighter as needed if say it's the middle of the day or if you're in a sunny room. So Logitech Flow, this is a feature from Logitech that requires both the MX Keys keyboard and the mouse, but it's basically Logitech's version of Universal Control, or Universal Control is Apple's version of Logitech Flow, whatever one you wanna do first, considering Logitech came out with it first. Now what this means is if you have two computers, which you can see here, both of them need to have Logitech Options software installed. And you can see as I move the mouse, it's actually gonna move from one screen right over to the other. And again, this is not a dual monitor setup. These are two different computers. So as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi network, you can configure them side by side and it will just flow right over between it. That'll switch both your mouse and your keyboard as you drag the mouse over to the other screen. So really cool feature to have. Just makes it this cohesive experience, which is great considering I'm going right now from Mac 
to Windows, both used completely seamlessly. And even further, what's cool with this is you can actually transfer a file from one computer and it pastes it to the other. So this does sort of break the barrier between using just one computer. You don't need one computer with two monitors. It's a really cool feature. It's only gonna work with the Logitech Options app installed. That is only available on Mac and Windows, so you wouldn't be able to use it across, say, a Mac and an iPad or Windows and an iPad. It has to be specifically with a computer that can install that software. Of course, you can still use this keyboard across any of your devices, whether it's a PC, Mac, iPad, phone. However, you do have to hit those pair keys to switch between your three configured options. But again, that works seamlessly two to three seconds and it's connected. So now for battery life for this thing, obviously a very big question for a lot of people. And I will say this is also why it's so heavy, right? It has to fit in this big battery to power that massive keyboard that's also backlit. So according to Logitech, and I will say my testing kind of aligns with this as well, is that it lasts up to 10 days on a full charge. Now that's again, using the ambient brightness, it's gonna be turning on pretty much every time you wave your hand over the keyboard. If you turn that backlight off though, it's gonna last you up to five months. So this is a really powerful keyboard, obviously a huge battery in there, and that's a pretty good amount of time to not need to charge your keyboard. Now, can you plug it in with a wired connection? Obviously this is something you can do with the Apple keyboard, the answer to that is no. It does have an integrated USB-C port and comes with a cord that you can plug into your computer, but that's basically just for charging. I will say though, you can still plug it in using that USB-C to your computer. However, that's just for charging, but you will still be able to use your keyboard through Bluetooth while it is charging. So overall, that's the Logitech keyboard. Great option. A lot of really cool features that I haven't seen on competitors, but obviously a lot bulkier than what you would expect, especially if you are moving from that Apple keyboard and a really noticeable height difference between it and the Magic Trackpad, if that's what you're using. Now onto the next one. So next up we have Saatchi. So from a distance, this one looks really good. The aluminum body, the tapered edges that make it look very, very premium and a lot more closely aligned with something that Apple would make, I will say. It has a slimmer profile than the Logitech and it's lighter too, making it feel a lot more portable. And bonus, that means that it aligns better with your Magic Trackpad. So again, I'm a big trackpad user. If you are too, this one will make a lot more sense for you. But as you get closer to this thing, here's my problem. It actually feels like a really cheap keyboard. The buttons are more rounded than competitors. And actually, if we're talking about the shape of the keys, it goes Apple for the most square, Logitech for slightly rounded corners, and then Saatchi for that very round button. But the buttons themselves actually do travel further than the other competitors, meaning when you're pushing down, you are pushing harder than any of the competitors are. And it's not a deal breaker, but coming from an Apple Magic keyboard where it really doesn't travel far at all, it definitely took some getting used to, and I was accidentally like missing buttons as I was typing on the keyboard. Also, wow, I didn't think I'd have this much to say about keys, but here we are, it's a keyboard review. All the buttons on this keyboard bevel in, except that bottom row of your command spacebar, everything down there. This really seems inconsistent, right? Flipping back to the Logitech one, you can see that they bevel out on the bottom and the top rows, but then on this one, everything including the function keys bevel in, except for the spacebar and everything at the bottom. So. Definitely found this very inconsistent. Definitely would have made sense to match that top row with the bottom, but that's just my opinion. Overall, feeling of these keys, very cheap. Still a decent keyboard, but cheap. Now getting to the function keys. So these, in my opinion, actually better than all of the competitors in terms of the options here. By default, of course, with Logitech, you can remap everything, but by default, the ones they have on here are better. Looking at the top row, you've got your F3 Spotlight Search, F4 Mission Control, F5 App Expose, and then F6 is your App Switcher. So I love this. I find that this is never actually a button on a keyboard, and I find myself always hitting Command Tab over and over. And overall, all of these function keys that are on the bottom here just make a lot more sense to me than what most people put on there. Now moving to the far right over here, you can see we've also got cut, copy, and paste. Again, something you do not see very often natively on a keyboard. Definitely thought this was cool. Had to really make it a habit to use these because you're just not used to seeing that. But overall, really good experience. Glad they included those in there. And then above that, you can see you've got your caps lock, 
and your charging indicators. And by the way, speaking of charging, this thing is rechargeable via USB-C on the back. Sachi's quoting out about 80 hours of working battery life and up to 100 days on standby. Now this is of course because of that lack of backlight in this keyboard, so if you're looking for one that has that, this is not the keyboard for you. But as a trade-off for 100 days of standby, that's a pretty good option. Just like all the rest of the keyboards, it also has Bluetooth 3.0, which is contributing to that low power and better battery life. Now connection time when switching between settings here. You can see as I switch to each device, it is only taking about two seconds here, as you can see I'm hitting a button. No matter what device I'm switching to, they're all starting really, really quickly here. So just like Logitech, very easy, very seamless switch. The one problem I noticed, and I did a bit of research here and I saw people commenting on reviews, is that I did have trouble waking my Mac with this keyboard. So I'm usually somebody who goes over and taps the space bar to wake my computer. And it did work on the Saatchi keyboard, but not consistently. So there were times I had to opt for waking with my trackpad instead of my keyboard. Again, nitpicking, not a huge deal, but would have preferred the option to use that. And now can this keyboard do a wired connection? No. Although it would have been nice to see, it does only connect via Bluetooth. Just like on the Logitech, you can still connect via Bluetooth while it's plugged in for charging, and that all works fine, but it doesn't actually do a traditional wired connection. So despite the critique, this is actually a pretty good keyboard. With the ability to switch between three different Bluetooth outputs really quickly in a couple of seconds, the functionality keys are very well thought out in my opinion. The overall design at a glance does look like something Apple would create, so if you're looking for that seamless look, this is a good keyboard for you. But then as you get closer, it falls victim to feeling a lot cheaper than I think anticipated. I think you could definitely get used to this keyboard, but when you're paying the same price as the other competitors in the market, like the Logitech MX keys, or the Apple Magic Keyboard, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to trade off this amount of quality to get this thing. You would expect the same quality as these competitors, and not worse. One downside I noticed with not just the Saatchi, but also the Logitech Keyboard, and I want to know if any of you are having this issue too, if you already own them, is that the Bluetooth connection initially when you first wake this thing, does cause a significant lag for the Apple trackpad. So that means I wake this thing and as soon as I go to move my mouse, it's really lagging across the screen and it actually almost makes it unusable for the most part for those first 30 seconds until it's actually ready to be used. So I actually can't believe this disruption. It did get really frustrating, especially since this was never a problem with the Apple Magic trackpad and keyboard that I was using before. But let me know in the comments, have you experienced this and have you found a fix for this? So overall, that's the Magic Keyboard comparison. We went over the Apple Magic Keyboard, the Logitech MX keys, specifically for Mac, and then the Saatchi Keyboard as well. Of course, I'll leave links in the description below to all of these things. And let me know down in the comments which one of these you're thinking about picking up, and if you're moving from Apple Magic Keyboard to this. While you're down there, remember to hit the like button because it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck, and hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.